Support for Digging Deeper comes from the Penn State Alumni Association. Connecting alumni to the university and to each other, the Alumni Association is powered by pride. Learn more at alumni.psu.edu. The Penn State Bookstore, now in an expanded location in the Hub Robeson Center. Improving the student experience at Penn State with philanthropic support for student causes throughout the university. And from viewers like you, thank you. With small businesses accounting for nearly 50% of private sector employment, it's vital that this portion of the economy continues to thrive. In this edition of Digging Deeper, Penn State President Eric Barron will explore the ins and outs of small business development and growth. He's joined by Heather McHorder, director of the Penn State Small Business Development Center, and Ashana Shikovit, graduate student and founder of Play Visio. I'll be back later in the show to talk one-on-one -on -one with President Barron about what Penn State's doing to encourage entrepreneurship. Now here's President Barron. Thank you so much for uh, joining me today to explore uh, how it is that we might start uh, companies here associated with the university. So Heather, you're the director of the Penn State Small Business Development Center. Um, tell us a little bit about the center and, and what it does. Uh, and in particular, how does it fit in in the broad array of, of programs that have been started at Penn State? Sure. Um, the Small Business Development Centers are a federal program. There are 800 small business development centers across the nation. Uh, at the Penn State Small Business Development Center, uh, we help student entrepreneurs, researchers, and uh, community members start businesses, and we help existing businesses expand. Um, we are well ingrained in all of the entrepreneurship um, uh, community. We help about 500 small businesses a year at our center. Um, we help them start businesses, we help cash flow projections, uh, we help with business planning, and all of our services are free and confidential. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if someone has an idea, how do they get started? Are you the first step? Do people go to Happy Valley Lunchbox and, and then to you? How does it work? Yeah, usually um, the pathway is they give us a call, mm -hmm. the Small Business Development Center, and we get them ready for applying to the Lunchbox. Mm -hmm. um, and they might continue to be a client of the SBDC throughout that process, but they get that intense vertical assistance while they're at the launch box mm -hmm. or at the tech accelerator or as a Ben Franklin client. There's a lot of different programs in the ecosystem or at, um, through extension. Extension mm -hmm. offers assistance um, also to, to businesses. Um, but we can work hand in hand with our partners um, because all of us have that small business owner in, um, interest in mind. So Ben Franklin, state supported partnership, uh, this mm -hmm. federally supported partnership, yes. uh, university entity, all hand in hand. All hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, if I'm thinking about this, do, do I have to have money? Am I paying you for your, uh, for your support? The small business development right. centers? Yeah. We are taxpayer funded. And so- Federal taxpayer funded. Federal and yeah. state. Mm -hmm. And we also receive uh, funding from the university. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we offer our services at no cost to entrepreneurs mm -hmm. because we, as the government and Penn State, want to see businesses grow and thrive in our communities. Which is wonderful. So um, I heard you list a lot of different constituencies that you support. Yes. And one of the ones you said was community. Yes. And does that mean if I'm in Mifflin County, I can give you a call and yes. get help? Yes, we have a lot of clients in Lewistown. Uh-huh. Yeah, and, and they, um, I actually have someone located in Lewistown mm -hmm. at the, the uh, Learning Center right downtown. And so they don't even have to drive up to State College. He can um, come right to their business or they can uh, visit them there, him there at their office. Um, so it's... Uh, very convenient for that entrepreneur. I, I just love the idea that here's the state, the federal government, 
the university all working together yes. with open arms for good ideas mm -hmm. and and so uh, Ashana you've had one of those good ideas and you're in the process of starting uh, yeah. a business and so your company is Play Physio. Um, tell us about it. Um, it's basically an idea for uh, making physiotherapy fun especially for kids. Uh, it's an important part of the rehabilitation process and uh, it's very difficult to get kids to do it. It's, 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 it's a hardware as well as a software combined product where uh, kids can breathe into the hardware and play a game in the software using it and keeps them engaged and uh, gets them to heal better. And so you're breathing better and this is, this is a recovery process that it's yeah. focused on? Yeah. And has anybody done something like this before or has turned it into a fun game and activity? Uh, there are a few products out there, but there's uh, been nothing too mainstream as of yet. So it's still an up and upcoming uh, idea. And how did you come up with the idea? What's your background? Um, I am, so I'm a graduate student now, but uh, I was, I did my undergrad in mechanical engineering and I, uh, was part of uh, a product development workshop which involved clinical immersion. So that's why I had met this one kid in, uh, in a clinic where he'd suffered a lot of injuries and this uh, exercise was prescribed to him. And uh, he just wasn't doing it. And the reason was that because it's very boring and kids just don't do it. So that's where the idea started. So is this your attitude in life? I see a problem and I try to solve it as an engineer. Yeah, that, that, that's basically how you come up with the ideas. There are, there are ideas all over and you just need to be on the lookout for them. Yeah. And how far along in your academic career were you before you decided, okay, I'm gonna start this business? Uh, I officially started just this summer, so that mm -hmm. was uh, my first year of grad school. But the idea had been in there since my junior year. So. Uh huh. And you were, were you were mulling it and deciding, yeah. okay, I can actually do something here. So now starting a business is really very fresh for you. Mm -hmm. What well, what's your experience? Are there roadblocks? Are there things that were difficultly difficult for you to 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 do, or did you find a lot of help? Um, at Launchbox and at Summer Founders, I, I did not expect that I would get that much help, but it was great. The experience was great. Uh, the thing with running a business, it, it's the experience, you can't really expect anything. So things that I thought would take a lot of time went over smoothly. Things that I thought would go over very well. Uh, took a lot of time because someone couldn't, didn't reply in time or like things of that sort. So you can't really think very far ahead and just roll with the punches. Could you just describe Summer Founders program for, yeah, sure. for people that are listening? Uh, so Summer Founders uh, program basically selects a, a group of uh, students. Uh, it's a competition. Yeah. Uh, you have to pitch in the beginning uh, of the year and uh, in the summer um, th there were six teams and uh, um, we had weekly sessions and they guided us throughout what n next steps to take on and uh, we were provided funding for developing the idea and it was a... So you had to do a pitch, you were selected mm -hmm. and they give you a little money. Yeah. So that instead of working for the summer you work on your company yeah. and then they give you a lot of guidance. Mm. Huh? So that's wonderful. So Heather, what are the common, the common problems that people run into in struggling to start a company? Oh, well, I, I think common problems that we see is finding investors, finding the capital needed, finding the time of day. To be a, a, an entrepreneur, you have to have that passion, the tenacity mm -hmm. um, to really follow it through. Um, um, finding the right market, mm -hmm. being able to pivot as needed. Mm -hmm. um, all important traits. Mm -hmm. um, and being able to connect the dots also, I think, are, are important. Because there are a lot of different it, parts it's of... A, yeah. So some go smoothly, some don't. But, mm -hmm. but uh, that's a pretty good list, getting the capital and making sure you have a, a market. But that's what all these programs are designed to help, right? right? Right. So in the process of looking at companies and, and helping people and, and sort of vetting them and providing that advice, 
Do you see some areas that are just riskier than others? Types of businesses? Mm -hmm. Where you look at it and go, okay, that's a challenge. <laughs> or is it more you um, go, that's a great idea, now we've got to make sure that... Well, what, what we do at the, at the SBDC, at the Penn State SBDC, is we try to help vet ideas in an educated manner. We, we try not to give opinion. Mm -hmm. And so um, we help everything from manufacturers to retail to tech to ed tech. Mm -hmm. to, and, and so, for example, if somebody comes into our center and wants to open up another coffee shop in downtown State College, um, we might run the demographics and, and say, okay, can our population support another, another one? Uh -huh. How will you differentiate against all the other ones? Mm -hmm. Um, of course, and so I'm giving the example of restaurants. Right, yeah. Um, very um, high turnover, mm -hmm. um, but it's something that uh, a lot of people are interested in starting. Mm -hmm. um, so that is a very, tends to be riskier mm -hmm. um, based on numbers. So that's more a uh, market-based sense of risk that you, yes. you might immediately sense. And, and there's low um, uh, margins in that business. And now if you think about an idea that uh, Ashana had, how would you, how do you react? I think that um, with this type of business, I, building a board mm -hmm. a, of uh, people in that industry, in healthcare, um, in tech development is critical. Uh, find, to get those right mentors for product development. Um, for a product, that um, might need FDA approval to find an easy path that doesn't need product approval to start um, getting uh, followers, um, software feedback um, is, is important to get traction. You can still um, develop the health-based uh, health product, but um, mm -hmm. to get traction for your business, um, you know, you want to get customers, you want to get um, traction for your businesses so you don't get um, stuck in mm -hmm. development mm -hmm. mode. We always talk about the, the successes, or at least we like to brag about the mm -hmm. successes. How, how important it is, is it to talk about the things that don't work? It is critical mm -hmm. to talk about it. Um, it. At Penn State, we have Global Entrepreneurship Week, which we had just uh, before Thanksgiving. And we surveyed uh, students on campus just before, um, just in the spring, to ask them what they wanted to learn about. Mm -hmm. And I have to believe that overall, um, uh, the community would, would say the same. And what they wanted to learn about was business failures. Mm -hmm. uh, when our alumni came to campus and CEOs came to campus, they want to hear about the pitfalls and about uh, what they wish they would have known. And that's very interesting. Um, and that isn't what they had said 10 years ago mm -hmm. um, when we had asked. So um, I think um, honesty with your mentors, uh, mm -hmm. with, with your mentees mm -hmm. is important because there, you know, whenever you see that, that person, that successful entrepreneur, there were a lot of failures along the way. Uh-huh, yeah. So, so really, when you mean honesty, it's, it's, oh, that's not, that's a great idea, oh, yeah, but knowing that, oh, I don't think this is going to work. It's rather, it, it, it's better to be direct, and, and that's mm -hmm. the way you can be the most helpful and, and help someone uh, yes. uh, move and forward. So. Seek, seek feedback from more than your friends and family. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I see it, I see it. So are there misconceptions to, to being an entrepreneur and starting a business that, either one of you have sort of seen and, and sort of mythology that's there that that you would you would correct if you could um so for people who are starting out for the first time and even talking to other my other friends is mostly this idea that you have to have everything figured out before you go in or like have there's a lot of inertia for people so it's when you get started, you realize that whatever you've thought doesn't really hold throughout. So mm -hmm. it, it's just important to take the first step. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. I agree. It's important um, to start right away. I think that entrepreneurship is romanticized a bit. Mm -hmm. um, it's very hard work. 
It, um, it's seven days a week when you're starting. It's, um, there's no vacation. Mm -hmm. You're always working. However, it's a huge reward. Yeah. You know, you, you see the fruit of your effort. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, it's a great career path uh, for if you have the right traits. Mm -hmm. So some entrepre entrepreneurs tell me you have to be hungry. Mm -hmm. That's, this is, this is a full tilt here mm -hmm. in, in going forward and, and doing these things. So, you know, one other, uh, and I don't know whether you would describe it in this category of misconception or, or myth, mythology, can you learn to be an entrepreneur or is it something innate? Mm, I guess you can learn because it's, the skills are all learnable. Like no one goes in knowing how to pitch or knowing how to make business plans. And mm -hmm. it, I think the only requirement is that you really want to do it. That that's mm -hmm. the only thing. Everything else can be mm -hmm. picked up on the way. Heather, would you? I, I agree. I think it's that innate because um, you, you have to have that passion. So maybe your pa passion is you're a singer or a cellist. And so you develop um, your entrepreneurship because a lot of times people think about entrepreneurs as businesses or uh, business people or um, engineers, but arts span the spectrum or, or entrepreneurs span the spectrum, of mm -hmm. course, um, of journalists mm -hmm. um, are entrepreneurs. But you have to have that um, perseverance, the work ethic. Mm -hmm. um, so you can't you can't learn work ethic. Mm -hmm. um, so it has that. I think that's innate. So let's flip this just uh, on the other side. Is the whole process of being an entrepreneur an experience that is valuable as an education in its own right, even if you never start a business? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, because um, starting a business is just one aspect of it. It's innovation in itself can be applied to a lot of fields. Mm -hmm. So it's just developing that mindset and taking accountability for getting mm -hmm. things done. Mm -hmm. I, I think the experience teaches you a lot about that. And, and uh, to pivot, how important is that it is oh. it that a human learns to pivot? It's critical. Yeah. Uh, things change so quickly today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Heather, there's all, all sorts of statistics about the interests of our students. What are the interests of our students? So we performed a survey uh, not too long ago, and 8% of Penn State students that we surveyed had already owned a business or owned a business today. And that's, I think, a staggering statistic. And almost half were planning on own, owning a business. So when you think about that, and you think about Penn State's part in fostering that, that entrepreneurship and that, that um, love for owning business, I think we play a critical role. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Shauna, you, you did this all on your own. That yes. works, but you could have had a team. A lot of students have teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree that it, it is better to actually have a team. Um, mm -hmm. But um, throughout my process, somehow, um, it's just the idea I developed with a team through the workshop, but then I was the only one who wanted to work on it, so it went forward. And then somewhere along the way, like I, I remain the only one working, but I am definitely looking on adding more people on the team because that'll speed things up a lot and uh, mm -hmm. make it way better, yeah. So, and then there are all these resources, and it, w would, would I go look at your, Heather, your, your web page and see here are all the services you provide? Would I yes. see that? It, it would be there. Yes. Well, what about ending the business? We help everything from idea to exiting. Um, if you're thinking about selling a business, we can help um, that next business owner with the purchase, um, the whole spectrum. So, um, you know, I guess I thought you could just walk away, but it might still have value or yeah, things Yeah, absolutely. That you, yeah. When you think about family-owned businesses too, um, so that's part of what we help with when you're thinking about um, that multi-generational uh, business that when you're getting it ready to hand it down to the next generation, perhaps that next generation wants to make changes to the mm -hmm. business, mm -hmm. to modernize it, we help with those issues. Um, so, I think. So, um, State College just got ranked as the 15th best small city to start a business. Mm -hmm. 
Does this make sense? Does that ranking make sense to you? Yeah, actually, like the resources over here are abundant and people are very helpful. So you just need to go and tell them that you want to start something. And you'll so, get help. Yeah. And you'll get help. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you think about it, and I've heard um, our entrepreneurs say, you know, you can start a business in Silicon Valley, but you're one of many. Mm -hmm. If you start a business here, you're fostered. We, we help every step of the way. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So if you just had one piece of advice, short piece of advice to give, to give someone out there just starting, what would it be? Just go for it, get the idea out, and don't just hesitate thinking that you need to refine it. And Heather, one small piece of advice? Connect with Penn State and the Small Business Development Center. Talk with others about your ideas. Because the help is there if you need it. Absolutely. Oh, great. Thank you so much uh, for, for joining me. It's uh, such a rich, exciting environment, and it's fun to talk about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up on Digging Deeper, I'll talk one-on-one -on -one with President Barron about the role of failure in innovation and about the Invent Penn State initiative. We commonly think of failure as a bad thing, but oftentimes the road to success does not occur without failure. Describe a time when you experienced failure and what you learned from that experience. Yeah, you know, there's probably lots of times where, where, um, where I, I thought I had a really good idea as an administrator, thought I had a really good idea, was sure that it made a lot of sense, and I just went for it, and um, and realized that I hadn't done that fundamental part about communicating and um, having to people see it uh, ahead of time and and start to uh, provide advice on how to make it uh, work even more smoothly, and you know I think I just was a little too sure of myself and and realized okay that didn't make any sense. Well, from then on out, I, I, I've tried to, uh, to make sure that I, I do that level of communication. I'm still not perfect at it. Nobody is. No, nobody is. <laughs> it's always yeah. a learning experience. Yeah, right. When you launched Invent Penn State in 2015, what was your vision for the program? So my first vision was that here you are ranked in the, you know, typically in the top 20 in external research funding, research expenditures the top 70 in getting our intellectual property into the marketplace. And we're a land grant. We're here to serve society in many different ways, primarily educating people. Uh, but part of that service to society is getting our ideas into the marketplace. So my first thought was, I don't want to be 70 in anything. Uh, uh, and we ought to be top 20 in getting our ideas into the marketplace. So I started to think at from, from that viewpoint, and also from the viewpoint that students were being left out of this process at many universities because the university doesn't own the intellectual property of someone who's not employed by the university. And so if you thought about this as entrepreneurship and starting companies to provide revenue to the university, you'd skip the students. But it's actually a wonderful educational experience and this is a generation that loves the idea of starting businesses. And if our students want to start businesses, why aren't we advantaging them? So those were the two ideas that I had primarily at the beginning. Have a, a better rank in getting our ideas to the marketplace, and let's pay a lot of attention to students and helping them be successful in the world. And how do university resources like the Small Business Development Center and the Happy Valley Launchbox fit into the Invent Penn State initiative? Okay, so they do it in so many different ways. I, I think the other thing that, that people sometimes uh, fail to see is they'll, they'll decide to create one program. Uh, let's have a, a better patent office or a licensing office or, or, or something. When really we want to think about it all in a comprehensive uh, way. Um, how do you incentivize faculty and students? Do you have roadblocks in, internally? Um, how do you create visibility for intellectual property? One of the things we heard from Heather was that finding capital is difficult. So how can we help with that visibility to find capital? One of the other ideas is a focus on the ecosystem that you have. There are a lot of different pieces here of how it is that you get help 
uh, everything from a competition to getting good advice uh, to being able to enter a launch box uh, to being out there and uh, have a have a marketplace and have the financial support to all those educational programs for students that you wrap into this. So it needs to be comprehensive. What do you think the impact Invent Penn State has on the Pennsylvania economy? What impact does I that think have? it's going to have a tremendous impact. By this time next year, we're going to have 20 incubators and accelerators around the state. Uh, in every community, I'm told that the community support is growing to, to match or exceed what the university is putting into it a lot of enthusiasm. There's so many different benefits from community partnerships to creating a business and starting it in your hometown. Uh, so many benefits. I, I think we'll look back at it and be really proud of what we've done for the state of Pennsylvania. Thank you, Dr. Barron. My pleasure. On behalf of Penn State President Eric Barron, we'd like to thank our guests. Heather Fennessy McWhorter, Director of the Penn State Small Business Development Center, and Ashana Shikovit, graduate student in mechanical engineering. I'm Michelle Wolf. Thanks for joining us. Support for Digging Deeper comes from the Penn State Alumni Association. Connecting alumni to the university and to each other, the Alumni Association is powered by pride. Learn more at alumni.psu.edu. The Penn State Bookstore, now in an expanded location in the Hub Robeson Center. Improving the student experience at Penn State with philanthropic support for student causes throughout the university. And from viewers like you. Thank you. What challenges do business owners face? The experience, you can't really expect anything. So things that I thought would take a lot of time went over smoothly. Things that I thought would go over very well uh, took a lot of time because someone couldn't, didn't reply in time or like, things of that sort. So you can't really think very far ahead. Starting a business on the next episode of Digging Deeper.